Beer is more than just a combination of ingredients. There's a science behind it. But there's also this really cool creative side behind it as well, right? So you, you can take all these different ingredients and you can give the same ingredients to five different brewers and they're going to make five different beers because they're going to add them in different ratios, they're going to do different mash temperatures, they're going to do different fermentations, different yeasts, whatever. There's a, there's a zillion different combinations that you can do with raw ingredients of beer to make every single conceivable type of beer in the world, which is great. There's, it's endless possibilities. Think of brewing ingredients like instruments, right? Um, you can just have one single malt, you know, it could be one trumpet, and one trumpet can make the most beautiful music in the world. And then you can have 20 different malts and 20 different hops all working together like a chorus. Yeah. So it's this, it's, it's really neat um, to be part of that and, and to think about it in those terms. Guys, thank you for joining us for Christmas in July. This is a special hopped up, not only because we are doing Christmas in July and we are joined by Lakewood, but this is the one year anniversary of these perkin awesome videos. A year ago, we started here at Lakewood making our first video and we were so happy to be back. They have so many good brews to offer and now they have a sour program. So we, we do make a lot of beers. We make a lot of different beers, but that, that's what keeps it really fun and exciting and keeps us innovating. Yeah. But we've started a few different beers um, with our kettle souring, which is Artsy Tartsy. I love how balanced this is. It's not, it's not gonna take you over the top. It's not gonna hit you in the back of the, the, the jaw. Yeah. yeah, we're not gonna kick you in the teeth with just the sour. Sours are, are starting to become almost like IPAs for you have certain people that are just trying to make the most sour thing that they yeah. can. Yeah, absolutely. Sours are definitely taking off. They are kind of polarizing, though. A lot of people don't really get the sour thing. Really? A lot of times, sours will either, they won't have any hops or very, very low hops. Yeah. yeah. So for people that don't really like hoppy beers, sours sure. is another good option to try. Right. And that's sort of what the brewery's kind of based on. A, a broad portfolio of beers that will appeal to everybody. And right now we're sitting in a different part of your facility. Uh, right. One that a lot of people don't know exists yet. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're, we're, tell us where we are. We right are now. in the inoculation station, is okay. like what we like to call this. This is kind of our new little baby experimentation. We wanted to play around with doing sours, but we want to do it the right way and yeah. make it nuanced. We don't want to just do sour to be sour and sure. just make it, like you said, drinking a jawbreaker. Yeah. So like, we want it to be a, just a, a, a nice nuance. It needs to be a balance of the sour and a little bit of funky and a little bit of that base beer that you're kind of going with. We want the malt and the yeast and the hops. I mean, it drinks really nice and they're, they're meant to be just sipped on all summer long. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. so I was born in Belgium. We moved to North Texas when I was about seven years old. And we would go back every summer and, um, visit grandma and all the other relatives and uh, and have beer. So uh, I actually knew Wim. Um, we both worked together at the same ad agency and he would always be that guy walking around the office with his homebrew and I would drink it. I've always been a massive beer fan. He started talking about that he was going to get this brewery up and running and going and we all thought he was kind of crazy at the time um, but he did it. My dad and I built the bar. I mean just you know try and reuse as, and repurpose as much as we can. So uh, we did it all ourselves. I mean, we, st we still work on that room. Yeah. We made a beer that was inspired by some of our homebrewing journeys and, you know, we wanted to make something really big for the beer nerds. And it doesn't just stop there. It's, you know, naming a beer is like naming a song, right? right? right. They had this name, The Temptress, and we all loved it. We thought, well, that's a great name for a beer. <laughs> Funny thing, we would notice when we started going out in that into festivals, and that was kind of our beer that was all for the craft beer guys, yeah. and we'd have these women coming up saying, where's that stout? Right. Where's that stout? Right. It could be 100 degrees out, and we're like, why do they want this stout so much? Word started to spread <laughs> around the festival. All of a sudden, we have a line of like 50 women that have heard about this awesome beer that tastes like chocolate cake. People were loving that beer. It didn't matter if they were men, women, everyone loved it. So we, we knew we kind of had a hit on our hands. Uh, now you guys have an anniversary coming up. We do, uh, yeah. What do you what do you have planned? Yeah, it's on uh, Saturday, July 29th. And in fact, we are debuting three cool new beers that have really never seen the light of day that we're trying out. All the typical fun games, food trucks, party. It's yeah. awesome. All right, so, so 29th? 29th, yeah, 29th. yeah, come on out. If tickets are sold out, you can always come to the door, buy a ticket there, so there we go. Lakewood, 
just continuing to kill it. That's all I have to say. These guys are amazing. Love these guys. Wim, you're incredible. We're going to sit down with Wim and talk, talk to him more, figure out why he is such a badass. 